morning, ESM. A month ago today was when Russia began attacking Ukraine. We have a guest here, Ms. Butenko. Uh, she is a Ukrainian herself who has offered, sorry, who has offered to help explain the situation to our school. We'll get into it after news and announcements. Madeleine Albright, the first woman to serve as Secretary of State, died at age 84. Her daughter, Anne, says the cause was cancer. She was the country's representative to the United Nations from 1993 to 1997 and was the Secretary of State from 1997 to 2001. I've been Colin with your news. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so Ukraine has a rich history and culture. What can you share with us? Um, well, the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, was founded in 480 uh, AD, and for several hundred years after 482, um, the Ukrainian people prospered and they learned how to live as a society, as a civilization. They adopted Christianity in 988, um, and they, at that time, there were a lot of wars going on back and forth, especially between siblings about who's going to get what part of the land. And so while that was going on, they were, like I said, learning how to live as a society, as a civilized society. In the late 1200s, um, the Mongols invaded Ukraine, and it actually wasn't called Ukraine at that point, it was still called Kiev and Rus, and when you see the spelling of Rus, it's R-U-S with an apostrophe. And at that point, uh, the Mongolians were, it was the beginnings of uh, Muscovy, the Muscovites, which later on became Russia. Um, Muscovy changed the name to Russia in about in the 1400s purely for the sake of confusing everybody else because they wanted to people to think that they were the ones who were there before everybody else. So the fact that Russia is called Russia is no coincidence. Um, they did it on purpose to make sure people, to, to convince people that the cave in Rus history was part of Russian history. A lot of textbooks have it wrong, um, so depending on who your teacher is, uh, but um, they do, you want to make sure that those are completely separate. Russia did not really come into to existence until the 1300s. Um, so for the next 100 years, about 600 years, Ukraine was, um, they, people were invading Ukraine from the west, Poland and Lithuania, and from the east, Muscovy, Russia, because everybody wanted a piece of the land. Um, in the meantime, though, Ukraine prospered, the, the language, the culture, um, the literature, and even throughout all these wars. In the 1800s, um, Russia forced, uh, forcibly relocated Ukrainians and Jews. Um, and we were enslaved for almost 100 years. And then with the Russian Revolution, um, oh, in which time they also banned all the publication and any education in the Ukrainian language. Ukrainian language has been banned uh, many times throughout its history, but somehow we were able to persevere and still maintain our, cult our culture and heritage. So uh, with, after the Russian Revolution, Ukraine did declare independence for a couple of years, but then in the 1920s, Stalin became, uh, uh, started his forced collectivization because Ukraine refused to become part of Russia. Um, it did not want to be communist, so between 1932 and 1933, the number is staggering, and they don't know exactly know exactly how many Ukrainians died, but they say anywhere between 5 to 11 million Ukrainians died in less than a year. Um, they actually they did come in and they took all the food away. Um, and a lot of Western media came to Ukraine to run the news because there, all of a sudden all these people were dying. And Stalin said it was because of bad crops, which was not true. Um, Ukraine is on rich soil. It's called the breadbasket of Europe. Uh, Walter Durante wore, wrote a piece saying that there is no famine in Ukraine, that there is no Holocaust, um, and he actually wore a Pulitzer Prize for his article for the New York Times, which now we're asking for the Pulitzer Prize to be revoked because the article was completely false. Um, fast forward to 1991 when the, the Berlin Wall came, well, 89, the Berlin Wall came down. In 1991, the Soviet Union fell apart. Um, Soviet Union consisted of 15 republics, and Ukraine was one of them. And then in 2004, we tried to have a pro-West uh, president, but he was poisoned by, by Moscow, by Russia. Um, so we had an uh, Eastern uh, uh, pro-Russian president for a while. Um, when he did not sign the negotiations with EU, um, in 2013, Ukrainians um, held a, um, a revolt. It was called the Dignity, the, the Dignity Revolution. Um, so it lasted from November 2013 to February 2014. There's a really good video on it called Winter on Fire. I highly recommend everybody to watch that because it really gives you perspective of how strong Ukrainians are, how strong our will is, and how strong we're going to fight um, in, in order to be able to maintain our independence and our identity. 
So after February 2014, um, the president was ousted. He, flew, he fled to Moscow. And at that point, that's when Putin decided to annex Crimea. And then he sent in Russian soldiers to the uh, eastern part of Ukraine, the Donbass and the Luhansk regions. It was right after the, the Olympics. And um, they're saying that it was the Ukrainian separatists who wanted to be uh, separated from Ukraine, but it wasn't. It was the Russian soldiers who were acting to be Ukrainian. They came in, and it was all, it was all show. It was all for show. Um, so then, that was 2014, fat, you know, now eight years later, um, because Putin was unable to get Ukraine then, uh, he decided to invade and try to get as much of Ukraine as possible. Uh, culturally, very rich in culture, you all know, we do the Ukrainian Easter eggs, the embroidery, uh, the Ukrainian dances are very popular. I know that there's a lot of, a lot of videos going on on social media about Ukraine, um, but very rich in culture, and you would think that after I mean, since 400 BC, people have been pouncing on Ukraine and trying to get, you know, get a piece of our land, but we've held on to our culture and our heritage. All right, we will be right back with more from Ms. Beating. The situation in Ukraine has been changing rapidly. What is the latest? Uh, you're right. It has been changing very rapidly. It's cha it can change from hour to hour, minute to minute. And um, with the way news works and the internet, we can get things instantaneously. Um, I found myself on the internet almost all the time, checking to see what's going on. And it's just, it, it, it's heartbreaking. Right now, um, the news is pretty much the same that Mariupol is being um, evacuated. Tried to, they're, they're, you know, we they're saying that Russia is taking citizens who stayed in Mariupol who couldn't get out. That they're taking them over to Russia and sending them into fortification camps. They are taking their phones and their passports and they're giving them Russian passports and they're sending them out to remote areas in Russia. Um, in their place, they'll be putting Russian civilians um, in Mariupol and hoping to stage some sort of a rally, saying that they want to become Russia. Um, I, that's what Russia does. They, they do all these fake demonstrations to show that these people actually want to be Russian when, when they don't. Um, I did hear this morning that the Ukrainians bombed a Navy, a Russian Navy warship. Um, so we are winning the war on the ground, but um, we do need support in the sky. As you know, I'm sure a lot of you heard that they say, you know, close the sky. Biden is in Brussels today speaking with uh, NATO leaders. Um, of the European, the European countries to find out what more we can do, what, what more, I keep saying we because I refer back, back and forth between we being Ukrainian and, and American, um, what more we can do. I know that the U.S. has already sent a lot of money and a lot of artillery to Ukraine. Um, you know, right now they're pleading for them to close the skies because we're getting bombed from the air. Uh, we, Russia has used more missiles on Ukraine than it has in Syria. Uh, Russia has suffered more loss than they, it has ever had so, suffered in Afghanistan. So the Ukrainians are very powerful. And I'm sure everybody's heard about the refugee crisis, that all the refugees are fleeing to the West. Um, it's just, it's, it, it, it's bad. And, <laughs> and it's the latest is the same that was, that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. All right, in a few minutes, we'll share how you can help as a student. WNBA player Brittany Greiner has met with U.S. officials for the first time since her detainment in February. A, close, a source close to her told ESPN that she was okay. Under Russian law, prosecutors have up to one year to give her a trial. And I'm Tanner with your sports. All right, how can the students of ESM help? Um, there are several ways that you can help. Uh, we do have several families here in the ESM district who are directly from Ukraine. Um, so you do have classmates here at the high school who have immediate relatives in Ukraine. Uh, check in on them. They definitely need to know that you're there to support them. And while they may not want to talk about it at that time, they may want to talk about it later. Uh, the best thing that I found to help me is to be able to talk about it. So please make sure you do check on your Ukrainian friends. We also have families here in the district who have family members in the military.
military and their members have been deployed to Europe because of the war, uh, make sure that you check in on, on those friends as well. Uh, read, read about as much as you, read about as much as you can. There's a lot of you know fake news out there, um, but make sure that you are involved and um, educated about how this happened because this wasn't a surprise. This wasn't a surprise when Putin became president in 1991. Um, we Ukrainians knew that something like this was going to happen, and Putin was able to uh, pretty much get into the governments of all the countries in the world and have something to hang over them that, in case something like this happened, that they wouldn't go against Russia. Um, so, you know, countries were a little bit slow to react to the um, invasion of or an annexing of Crimea and uh, um, the, the, the Russian forces coming into eastern Ukraine back in 2014 because we depended on Americans and other European countries depended a lot on Russia on the oil um, and, and other, other stuff, but mostly oil. So, you know, he had this grand plan, and he did, he did. He got himself into other countries around the world, and so people were afraid to attack Putin back because of what he had on, you know, on them, on the country. So being educated, I think, is one of the best things. Um, ask questions if you don't know, um, but right now uh, really is to make sure that you show your support to uh, the community, who, the, in the, com the families in the community who are, uh, who are Ukrainian and who are also directly affected by the war. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. And we will continue to keep everyone who's watching updated with the latest developments in Ukraine.